Well, hey folks, my name is Brad, and today I am doing what I love most, metal detecting, way up in the mountains of Vermont around an old stone-lined foundation that was built in the early 1800s and abandoned before the turn of the 1900s. There's absolutely no telling what kind of treasures could be in the ground here, but I intend to find out. Now, if this is one of the first of my videos that you've seen, I publish one of these every single Friday. So if you like what you see here today, consider hitting that subscribe button or just come on back next week. I'm gonna get the metal detector out, see if we can find a few treasures today. 95, that is a beautiful target. Oof, you saw that coin just flip out of there. What is this? I don't recognize this, Moses. Well, what we have here is a big copper coin and I don't recognize it upon first glance, which tells me it is more than likely going to be a token, something issued by a general store or a merchant of some kind, or maybe it's foreign. Let's get it cleaned off and uh, see what we got here. Well, on this side, the only <laughs> word I recognize is what I believe says Moses. Tolanto Barbados? see what's on this side <laughs> well we can uh, very clearly read slavery up at the top on this side man all right well typically if I find something like this I don't know what it is I'll just look it up on my phone real quick and we can talk about it uh, but I am so far out in the boonies I have zero cell service so this is going to have to stay a mystery until I get home in any case what I know about the history of this place. They were definitely here in the 1830s, and during that time, there was a crisis in the United States. There wasn't enough coins to go around, so merchants were making tokens to fill that need. And there is hundreds of different copper coins this size that were tokens that were made at that time. I have a hunch that's what this is, but I'm not gonna know till I go home and do some research. Amazing find. Can't wait to learn more about it. It's a very nice target. 91, 92. It seems kind of big though. 93. Oop. Watch out, buddy. I almost got you. Oh, man. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Well, I actually just found one of these large crotal bells. I believe it was last week. Uh, and I was telling the camera, I very rarely find them this large. I have found dozens and dozens of the smaller variety, what we call sleigh bells. But this kind are far more rare. It is, I can tell, a different variety based on this uh, from the one I found last week. And this one is unfortunately substantially more broken but you can see that it was squished and shattered. And what is big enough to do that? Well, very likely the horse or maybe even oxen that this was attached to. Based on how deep it was, I have to imagine that this was an area where those animals spent a lot of time, get quite a bit of mud and things tend to sink quite deep. A great find. Unfortunately, this one will never ring again. It's broken just the wrong spot to get a clapper back in there. But a great find nonetheless. We can display it this way. No one will know. A big old brass bell. 79, nice target. Oh, we know what that is. A nice one too. Well, we have another classic 1800s Vermont farmer artifact here. And these came in all shapes and sizes. This one happens to resemble a shoe buckle shape to some extent, but that's not what this is. This is just a very utilitarian suspender buckle. I do believe this is actually made out of iron 
but it sounded so good on the metal detector because of the shape. And it may have even been plated in something at, at one time, which helps with the target on the metal detector. But you can see just how simple of a design it is. We have two pieces. This would have swiveled. Pins would have gone through uh, the strap. They certainly come a lot prettier than these. I have found them with flowers and snowflakes and butterflies. Uh, but the folks here were hardworking farmers. They probably didn't have a whole lot, and they certainly weren't going to spend their extra money on butterfly suspenders. Cool find. Seventy-eight. Seventy-seven, seventy-eight. Oh, what is this? It certainly seems like it's a coin, but it rang very low on the metal detector. What in the world is this? So that did not register anywhere close to where a typical big copper coin should have on my metal detector. It was a high 70s target. Typically coins are high 80s, 90s. It doesn't seem like it's made out of a classic copper composition. I don't know what this thing is. But hopefully you can see there's actually two holes, which leads me to believe this was probably turned into a child's toy. If we make out what this thing is supposed to be? Yeah, it's a, it's a large set, but it's definitely not a large set. Man, I don't know what it is about this particular place <laughs> and coins that are mysteries, but I think I've mostly got it figured out here. Hopefully you can see on this side, it does say one cent, just like a large cent. And on this side, you can make out the bust of a left-facing Lady Liberty. The date would be down here with a hole right through it. So this does appear to be a large cent, but it is without a doubt a counterfeit which actually isn't all that uncommon. I have found quite a few counterfeit coins and counterfeiting was so rampant in the 1800s. I believe it was like 20 or 30% of all coins in circulation at that time were counterfeit. In fact, old Abe Lincoln actually created the Secret Service, which in these days is meant to protect the president, but back then their job was to combat counterfeiting. Whoever made this was a criminal. They were doing something very illegal even though it is just one cent and uh, what i find so fascinating is it was turned into a child's toy these two holes indicate that a string was put through here kind of pull on the strings and it made a whizzing sound they call these whizzers and the story that it tells me is that maybe the adults of this house maybe got this in their change realized it was counterfeit and then gave it to their kids as a toy so cool evidence of a 150 year old crime Sometimes these are actually even more valuable than the real ones to the right people. Awesome find. So cool. 62. Huh. Oh, I know what this is. That's a pretty one too. Well, I believe it was last week I found one of these artifacts and I didn't talk about it throughout the video, but it was in the wrap up at the end. And I actually received, I don't know, half a dozen messages and emails and even more comments on the videos saying, hey, I found those in the past. What the heck is that? Well, I just found another one. And the last one I found was circular. This one is oval, but it is the same thing. And it's just what I would call an escutcheon behind a drawer pull for a piece of furniture with drawers. Through this square hole would have gone a more than likely brass nail and on the end would have either been the knob for a drawer pull or there may have been two of these and it would have been the hanging style two pin drawer pull. These go back quite a ways. This could be end of the 1700s but based on what I know about the history of where we are today it's more than likely middle of the 1800s. They're a common enough find. I typically don't talk about them, but 
since I didn't talk about them last time and I got so many questions, I thought I'd mention it this time. Little brass escutcheon for old piece of furniture. And a pretty one at that. Well, one question I get all the time is on my adventures up here in the mountains, do I ever stumble upon old forgotten family cemeteries or gravestones? And yeah, I do, but it's never unexpected, right? The landowners who invite me to these places typically know what's on their land and they give me a heads up and then I'll avoid those areas with my metal detector out of respect. So it's never a surprise until today. So here we have one single solitary stone. There are no others around here that I can see, uh, but it is actually a double stone. There are two names on the other side. Both death dates are in the 1830s. They are siblings and they are both children. So I know folks always get upset when I don't show the names on the gravestones I find in my videos. But these days, it is very easy to just Google those names, find out exactly where I am. And out of respect for the landowner who invited me here today, I'm not gonna tell the entire internet where she lives. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but it is a double gravestone, two children, death dates in the 1830s. And if for some reason the landowner doesn't know about this, I will obviously let them know and we will get this recorded on one of the many you know, gravestone databases that are online. So I am just noticing now there is a bit of a stonewall fence around this area. I'm going to get out of here, not do any metal detecting, again, out of respect, and go closer to the home. See if we can find a few more things over there. Well, that is a spoon handle. Whoa. It's hallmarks. Well, something you can always count on finding at these old places in the forest are spoons. I have found three or four fragments so far today both iron and brass, but this one I just found is the first one with hallmarks, which is always exciting. It gives me something to research. O-H-N something something T-H. As for the material, I hesitate to say that it's silver because it did ring very low on the metal detector, uh, but it is possible there was a little bit of silver in there it strikes me as like a white bronze, but we'll have to do some research on those letters to figure out how old it is and maybe we can get down to what it's made out of. Certainly not fine silver. Great little find. Let's see if we can maybe find the rest of it. 85. Well, my last few videos are going to have to be required viewing for this one because I keep finding things that kind of echoes back and are related to things I found in recent videos. And this is another one of those objects where a few weeks ago, I found this giant harmonica reed and I speculated that it may have been to a chromatic harmonica because it's so large and that I did not believe that it was a pump organ or an accordion or squeeze box uh, because those reeds look totally different. Case in point, an accordion reed. And the accordion would have been just full of these. All different sizes, smaller ones for higher notes, larger ones for lower notes. And occasionally these actually have the note engraved on them, what note they were. It does not appear as though this one does, unfortunately. There are a few instruments that were quite common in the home back then. Uh, first being the harmonica, because they were inexpensive, relatively easy to play. Next most common was probably the accordion. Not quite so inexpensive, but they were a very, very popular instrument of the time across the entire world. And then next, of course, uh, would be the fiddle. But I don't believe I've ever actually found any fiddle parts because I don't think there was any metal on them. Even the strings uh, were made out of gut back then. So 
Uh, but this is without a doubt a reed to either an accordion or a pump organ, which essentially the same thing. Once again, fits right in line with what we know about this place. But now we can imagine the folks living here playing an accordion. Not a treasure in and of itself, but the picture it paints is a nice one. All right, I have not been this excited about a Target in a while. This is a 99. 99, and it is small and sounds great in all directions. I'm gonna make a big hole to make sure I don't hit whatever this is. Wow. It's right here. Oop. Gosh, is that a copper? That's wild. I've never had a copper ring that high. Let me double check the hole here. That's it. That's crazy. I wonder what this is to ring so high on a metal detector. Now, I am not about to say that I am disappointed in finding an old copper coin, but I thought for sure, based on the numbers of the metal detector, that this was gonna be made out of silver. I don't think I've ever found a copper coin that registered a 99 before. Let's see what this thing is. All right, well, I think I figured it out and I don't believe it, but it seems like it's just a very typical large scent. On the back here, just in the right light, you can see that circle in the center, which would be the wreath. And then on this side, you can see the bust of Lady Liberty facing left. Very hard to make out. It, the coin is not in very good shape. I still can't really get over why it registered so high on the metal detector. Uh, it might just have to do with it laying perfectly flat, just under the surface, soil conditions, who knows. But in any case, it is the first real <laughs> coin that we have found here, as far as I can tell. Not a counterfeit, not a token. United States coin. Wish it was in better condition, but maybe you can see there are pines all around me and uh, their needles are very acidic and unfortunately this happens to coins. Now silver ones though, <laughs> great find. Unbelievable. All right folks, well it is the end of the day for me and you know thinking back on the things that I found today, this is just a very typical middle of the 1800s Vermont farm. Almost all of these things I have found before many times, but these coins that I found, I am very excited about. Not only did I find a counterfeit, which tells a great story, I also have a token here, which I have never seen or heard of before. Cannot wait to get home and do some research on it. I have everything I found today out on this log. Let's take a look. Starting in the back, we have a giant crotal bell, unfortunately broken, but it's the second one I found in just a few weeks, which is pretty incredible. A bunch of oil lamp pieces, <laughs> all of my spoon fragments, three iron bowls, this is a brass bowl, and two handle ends. But this one actually has some hallmarking on there. We have an accordion reed, a suspender buckle. I did actually find two buttons today, and then out front, an escutcheon, and three coins. We have a large scent, our counterfeit large scent, and then out front, a token of some kind that says slavery on it. All in all, a fantastic day. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video, and hopefully I will see you back here next Friday for another new adventure looking for treasure up here in the mountains of Vermont. Mm -hmm.